you're a software developer like me, then let me know if this rings a bell. I like developing software. I like writing code. What I don't like is deployment. Once your code is written and you have an app, whether it's a mobile app or uh, <laughs> Android apps, <laughs> Have you ever tried to deploy an Android app? Not fun. Or a web app. You have that app, you need to deploy it somewhere. And your app works on your machine, but is it gonna work on your hosting provider? What kind of configuration are you gonna need to do? How long is it gonna take? All those things are unaccounted for unless you've done it a ton of times and you're using the same stack, but that's beside the point. What if, here's what I've been doing lately. This is an app I recently deployed. It's a single page LLM inference hardware calculator. You might've seen me show this on the channel before. And here's another one. This one fetches YouTube comments. Comments. Eventually, I want to use this when I run raffles on the channel for videos. I want to be able to fetch a bunch of comments and pick random ones using my own tool instead of relying on somebody else. And then they're going to change their policy and then start charging. You know, I'm hosting all these on Savala, which, by the way, hosts static sites. That's my LLM inference calculator right there. I have my YT comments front end, which is written with Vite. And the back end is an application, which is just a Node.js with Express app. I've got object storage available here. I've got databases. Oh, I'm also using Anaden for some automation too. Instead of getting all these other apps and hosting all these other apps, I'm just gonna have one app. It's gonna be a front end and back end all hosted together and I'm gonna use Next.js for that. Now I've been developing React apps since 2015, but I've never actually used Next.js. Yet I quickly was able to set up and use Next.js in 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the approach that I've started using where I deploy a shell of an app first to make sure that that deployment is really smooth because I want to be able to push to GitHub and have that automatically picked up, deployed and working. That way I know in the back of my mind that there's nothing else holding me back from fleshing out the rest of that application. Anyway, before this becomes a really boring video, let me show you how I do that in Savala. They have something called templates and they have a bunch of different templates, Firecrawl for crawling, Ghost, for CMS, Laravel projects, MongoDB plus client, and uh, there's an Aiden. You can just spin that up immediately. That's an automation tool. And here's Next.js. I can click on deploy now, pick my region. That one's closest to me, deploy template. And this is... <sighs> I thought I came up with this. I thought I was being clever. I thought it was deployment driven development, but it turns out that term already exists. So yeah, I'm not that clever, but I did discover it. So do I still get credit? And there's the app deployed and I have all these features available by clicking buttons. I can just enable a CDN. I can enable edge caching status. I'm gonna do that after everything is done because that's just so easy to do because I don't want caching while I'm developing. That's just gonna drive me nuts. I can set up networking. I can change my disks. I got user management right here. I can connect this to databases, environmental variables, but here's where you can actually start developing. Well, first of all, let's visit this app. It's a Next.js template, right? So it's got nothing, but it has the ability now to have the back end and the front end all working together. So what do you do from here? Well, you got this repo that was cloned from GitHub. And that's going to be your key. Let's go to that repository, Next.js demo, and we're going to fork it. <laughs> and let's call this one YT comments. You know what? It's not just going to be YT comments, YT tools. I probably should be a little more descriptive, but whatever. Create fork. Once this is forked, I'm going to clone it so I can write code against this fork. Git clone YT tools. Pop this open in your editor of choice. And here is the app locally. Now I just do NPM install because it is an XJS project. So it does need NPM and node and all that. Now we just do NPM run dev. Now I got this working locally. The Next.js project template working locally. Look at that IP address, it's local. Now go crazy, do what you want. You can test things out. I initially did a little hello example to see how the push thing works, but eventually you're gonna have a working front end and back end application all together in this one Next.js project. I did a little bit of vibe coding, I'll admit to it, but it gets me far. I'll finish up YT tools another time, but I'll show you how far I got. This is it right here. All this was vibe coded with an agent inside VS Code using Claude Sonnet 4. And it did a fantastic job. I'm really liking Claude Sonnet 4 for this. Now, because I have over 25 years of software development experience, especially web, I was able to ask it for certain things that, you know, somebody might not ask if they're just starting out. Because when you get your project, it's 
just the hello world, right? But you want to make sure you tell your agent to architect it in such a way that's going to be more maintainable in the long run. You want to make sure that your secrets and your API keys and everything are not in your code. They're not committed to GitHub or Git repositories. So it did that and it put them in the environmental variables that I can later plug in when I'm actually deploying this to production. So when it's local, it's going to read it from this env.local right there. Uh, so there's my secret key for Google service account. You don't see the rest of it, so it's fine. You're not going to be able to get that. Also, I had it convert to base 64, so it's not in plain JSON form. Not only make it easy to read, but also to convert inside my code. So now I just need this Google service account base 64 environmental variable, which has all my secrets to connect to the Google APIs so I can fetch YouTube comments. Next is this library services section, which has service services for my front end and for my back end business logic, basically. And finally, your front end pages are here as well. These are just react components. I could probably break this up a little bit further, but it's a pretty simple page. The nice thing is the peace of mind you get because you've already deployed it. Now, if I go to one of my videos and I copy the URL, let's go here, paste it in here, max comments, let's get 100, fetch the comments, and there they are. People think I look like Bear Grylls. Is that true? Is that right? But usually I get more than 100 comments, so let's uh, try and increase that. Right now, my comments are limited to 100 maximum comments. I wanna be able to select 10,000 comments. My videos don't usually go over 10,000. Yet, yet. Make sure that the front end UI has a drop down that represents these values up to 10,000. And you might want to look into paging the YouTube API because I don't know if they're going to allow 10,000 comments to be downloaded all at once. So I just left that as a command for my agent to work on and I'm going to press play here. Vibe coding, ladies and gentlemen, this is how it works. Well, the agent went ahead and did a bunch of stuff. <laughs> Some of the stuff I didn't even think about. And also, I had no idea that VS Code had a simple browser built into it. That's pretty cool. So here is UI change that it made. And we've got up to 10,000 here. I'm going to actually open up browser. And let's get uh, 500. Fetch comments. Ooh, new message. It did it. And it got the replies. What? Look at that. It did the paging. 180 comments were fetched. And I think that's how much my video has. with 131 top level comments. So the rest were replies and I can download the CSV right there. Nice, here are all the comments. So this will make it easier for me to pick a winner and also do things like sentiment analysis and things like that. So leave your comments so I can analyze you. <laughs> I mean, if people like videos, they'll give a thumbs up or they'll give suggestions for other videos down in the comments below. It's always appreciated. So thank you very much for doing that. And now I have <laughs> some changes to commit. So I'm going to add all these added comment paging. And by paging, I mean server side fetching paging for the API, not front end page. So commit sync changes. Now I'll just go back to my control panel in Savala and I can say deploy now. I could just have this automatically deploy whenever a commit happens in GitHub. It can detect that and automatically deploy. I'm doing that for my LLM inference calculator. But here I want to deploy manually because I might have several commits. It's a larger application than just a single page. So I want to control that manually. So you can do that. Now, here's the key. Remember when I said I'm not committing any of the Google API secrets? Never commit your secrets to GitHub or any kind of source control, really. So here you have environmental variables. And this is where I put my Google service account base 64. And there's the JSON. That's the old one. I could just delete that. But this is where my secret is. Now I can also enable a custom domain name here. So if I want, I don't know, alexiskind.com slash uh, YouTube comments or something like that, I can point to it. Do I own that domain? I don't. Who owns that domain? Well, it's taken. I missed that boat. And now everything's been deployed. It took one minute and 43 seconds. Let's visit the app. And there's the app. We got say hello, which is just my my little test. But we also have this. All this UI stuff was done by Claude 4. It's not the best looking UI, but it's certainly nicer than what I had before. Let's paste that in, get 500 comments and fetch comments. And there they are. 
beautiful. So now this is hosted. I'm super confident that my pipeline works and I can add a bunch of features without worrying how that's gonna affect deployment. I can even start adding database features for storing these things, which I'm gonna add next. Let me know if you wanna see a separate video on that. But otherwise for static sites, this is a no brainer. It's just so easy to deploy these things. So check out Savala, go to their template section. Let me know what you come up with and whether this DDD, deployment driven development works out for you. or. If if you've already been doing it, which you probably might have been, let me know in the comments as well. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.